some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Having to read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made a male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh, so they are no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another woman commit adultery. Okay, guys, so I'm finishing as I was uh, explaining uh, in the previous one because here the, the Pharisees, they come and ask that, is it okay? You know, and ask if it's okay to give uh, a wife a certificate of divorce and send her away. You know, and Jesus says, mm -mm, it wasn't like that in the beginning. So in, in the last uh, podcast, I was explaining why daddy allowed that to happen. You know, he allowed uh, human beings to divorce because uh, they had changed. Adam uh, died spiritually, thus killing all of us so that sin was um passed on to all of us so you'll find that at age 13 you start craving sex start craving sex your body is is wanting things that it didn't want before you understand so uh maybe you get married at a very early age you know because you are trying to run away from sin which is good but now you find it that hey Maybe I no longer love this person. Or your body is giving you problems and maybe you divorce. You understand? And you're like, ah, I'm cheating. And your wife or your husband is divorcing you because of um, being unfaithful. You understand? So daddy in the past, he allowed uh, uh, them to divorce, you know, uh, because of that. But he's saying that it wasn't like that in the beginning. Meaning that if Adam and Eve had not uh, obeyed Satan, they wouldn't have died spiritually. So obviously, we don't know what could have happened to our bodies. You understand? So I was explaining all of that. Now, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, our bodies at age 13, guys, they start giving us problems. So it's easy for you now to sort of like say, oh, well, it's my body. What can I do? I can't control it. Well, let me tell you something. You can control what you do about it, but you can't control that sex desire. But you can control what you do about it. You understand? Because you see, guys, Jesus gives us a command and he says that uh, we are not uh, to remarry. It's okay to divorce. You understand? But not to remarry. Suppose you marry and then uh, your spouse cheats on you. And it's hard, guys, to live with someone who cheats on you because the person who cheats on you is telling you that I'm not, I don't love you enough to control my body. Because the person who loves you enough will control their body. And if they realize that sex is defeating them, they will run straight to you and have sex with you instead of cheating. You understand? Now, when they cheat on you, they are telling you that I don't love you enough to control my body. You understand? So they cheat. So it's difficult to remain with someone who uh, has been uh, unfaithful in marriage. You understand? Some do stay in marriage because of unfaithfulness. Uh, I mean, because... Uh, of children they like oh well i've got kids you know i can't leave their father or mother you know i would keep trying you understand others stay because they don't want to separate with their assets because when you divorce you separate with half of your things so they don't want to you know so they remain in those loveless marriages you understand but uh should you uh marry early because you don't want to live in sin having sex outside marriage uh, and then your spouse cheat on you. Uh, what happens is that you will then have to decide whether you want to divorce this person who cheated on you. Because we are allowed to divorce, but you are not allowed to remarry. So you can either choose to remain with that person who's cheated on you and uh, continue having sex if you realize that you can't live without sex. You can continue doing that, you understand? But if you say, hey, this one is too much for me. I can't live with a person who is a cheater. I, I, I cannot do that. It's okay. Jesus will not do anything about it. Uh, he, he will not take you to hell because of that. But you need to know that if you divorce, you can't remarry. 
divorce i mean divorce is allowed in the kingdom of heaven but it's not allowed i mean but remarrying is not allowed you understand because when you remarry you are now prostituting you are committing adultery you understand because you see human beings were meant to have one sexual partner per lifetime meaning you first of all you 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 had to have sex in this institution called marriage i often speak against sex uh and it's outside marriage not inside marriage in marriage it plays its huge part without it you might find yourself in divorce court you need to understand that so i often speak against sex in marriage I mean outside marriage because outside marriage it's sin you can even find yourself going to hell because of it why because inside marriage is sin you understand now maybe you will ask me hey i've been having sex now am i going to hell now when you read the word you will realize that the word says children do not sin if you do sin there is a, a, an advocate meaning jesus meaning he's there to cleanse you with his blood A child is one who doesn't know, one who doesn't understand, one who sins in ignorance. Even in time of, of old, meaning the old covenant, daddy uh, forgave them, used the blood of animals, um, you know, for those sins committed in ignorance. But when you read Hebrews 10:27, it says, "Once you know the truth and you continue in sin after receiving the knowledge of of, of truth." you can't be forgiven you'll go straight to hell so that's why i love jesus jesus will forgive you if you sin in ignorance if you didn't know if you didn't understand now i'm saying that we were meant to have sex inside the institution of marriage you understand and if your spouse uh, cheats and you decide to divorce it's okay divorce that person but if it happens that you can't live without sex you realize that i can't live without sex you will have to remain with that spouse so that you will continue having sex meaning that spouse will be there for sex purposes only you understand because if a person cheats on you it's hard to live with such a person you know so if you realize that you can't bear this you can either divorce and remain single forever or you can remain with that person and just reserve them for sex purposes only you understand that is allowed you understand because remarrying is not allowed when you remarry you are now committing adultery and when you marry someone who, who is divorced you are actually committing adultery you understand so what pastors are doing in churches they are actually producing a prostitute because sex outside marriage number 1 is prostitution it's not allowed it's sin you understand it's not allowed so if you having sex outside marriage you are you are a prostitute it's just that you are an unpaid prostitute you might be hiding behind the word oh it's my boyfriend she, she's my girlfriend you are a prostitute you it might make you sleep better at night to say that oh it's my girlfriend or boyfriend you are a prostitute you understand because it's outside marriage where's part you are not paid at least prostitutes of the world are paid you understand but should you uh, wait until you marry then you have sex and this person cheat on you and you decide mm -mm, i can't live with that you can divorce but you can't remarry because if you remarry you are now prostituting again because you are now having sex with someone you understand it, even though this person is marrying you you are not allowed it's not allowed in the kingdom of heaven though i don't know about churches churches have their own beliefs you know pastors will open churches and preach their own things wonder why i don't have a church because they've got their own beliefs they don't stick to the word you understand one will open the church and tell you that you should pray to mary there is no way does it say in the word they will pray to this thing called rosary no way does it say in the word you know one will open a church and tell you that there is no hell you read the word there is most definitely hell one will open a church and tell you that uh, god works together with ancestors you read the word that it says in time past i spoke to the israelites through the prophets at that time they were physically alive but in these days i speak through my son meaning the new testament yet you they open churches and tell us that god works together with ancestors some would open churches and tell us that there are still more books written added to the bible yet you read the book of revelation is 22 jesus tells john do not add or omit 
No more. You understand? It's from Genesis to Malachi, from May to, to the book of Revelation. You understand? So pastors open churches and preach their own things. Others will open churches and tell you that uh, you must run after riches, the things of the world, there's blessings. You read the word. It says that mm -mm, do not love the word or the things of the world. You understand? So they produce people who are worldly in churches. You understand? And they tell you that once saved, saved forever. You read the word. It says that once you know the truth and you continue in sin, no, you no longer remain any sacrifice for sins, meaning you're no longer forgiven, meaning you die spiritually. You understand? So I've got a problem with churches because of what they are teaching. They are not sticking with the word. I just want the word. You understand? So it's things like that that we have to address, you know. So I was sitting because, you know, sometimes young people, they will ask you, uh, is porn uh, right does God have a problem with porn? Well, I ask you, has he said anything about porn in the word? You know, so it's things like that. A church might be against porn or must might be in favor of porn. The word doesn't say anything about porn. Others will tell, will ask me about masturbation. So you're busy telling us about sex outside marriage is sin, is sin, is sin. So can we masturbate? What does the word say about masturbation? If it doesn't say anything, it doesn't say anything. But it does speak against sex outside marriage. You understand? It does speak uh, against remarrying. You understand? So we need to stick to the word. Guys, I love sticking to the word because my Lord said, Nini, stick to the word. Stick to the word. You understand? Because if I was was continuing following the beliefs of churches jesus said you're not going to enter my kingdom now you're not going to enter my kingdom get out you understand so while i'm not against churches i am against their beliefs because these people who open churches they want to please people so they come up with their own beliefs that are not in line with the word i want to make it to jesus's kingdom when i live here you understand so i have to stick to his word just as he commanded me he said nini Stick to my word, read my word, safeguard my word. Do you understand? That's why at the end, I always tell you, and remember, the word of God still remains the only source of information about his kingdom. So stick to the word, scrutinize the word. Don't even listen to me. Uh, check if what I'm saying is in line with the word. You know, there was this guy in Perea when Paul uh, was uh, preaching, he would open the word and find out if what Paul was saying is in line with the word. People are listening to pastors instead of that way to understand like you take what these nuns are doing they appear on tv they tell you that this uh priest told them to perform sexual acts on them and, and and i'm like you are a fool you know you are a fool you know nowhere does it say in the word that you should perform any sexual act on any pastor if you had read the word you would not have uh, agreed to do that to your pastor because it's not in line with the word why are pastors from catholic church decide uh to not marry Yet go and rape nuns there. It's not right. Jesus is not against marriage. If you realize that you can't live without sex, marry. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I love what they do in Catholic churches. While I don't agree with their teachings because their teachings are not in line with the word. Obviously, when they leave this, they can't go to where Jesus is because of the teachings. That's the problem with, ch with churches, guys. They preach that which is not in line with the word. I want to make it to Jesus' kingdom when I live here. So I have to stick with the word. You understand? So I love what they do, though, you know, that they try to commit to be devoted to to the father but you can't be devoted to the father if you don't have the right knowledge the reason paul was not married and i i think they were trying to emulate paul because it's good paul says that when you are married your interest would be divided if you want to commit it, guys if you want to be devoted to daddy you can't if you are planning to have a family because what if your wife doesn't or your husband doesn't love daddy as much you understand and you you will have a uh, divided interest to understand. So they were trying to emulate Paul, you know, by remaining unmarried so that they will be devoted. It's good. But this thing of being raped by pastors in the name of Jesus, because this is rape in the name of Jesus. And I say, and guys, I ask, are you fools? You know what I mean? They cry, they open TV, they're crying. Oh, oh, oh. The priests are asking us to perform this uh, way fool. You, If you read the word, if you had stuck to the word, you realize that the preachings of 
Catholic Church aren't in line with the word of God. You understand? So you would have realized that and got out of the church. You know what I mean? So it's things like that. So we try to stick with the word. So it's good to remain unmarried. Paul says that it's good to remain unmarried. He himself was not married. He was devoted. But the thing is, Paul took Jesus' uh, teachings exactly as they are so those things you need to understand if you want to uh, uh, get married get married there's nothing wrong with that until next <laughs>